Our next speaker is the Chief Marketing Officer here at The Fool. She is also a wife and the mother of eight-year-old twins. So, twin boys, by the way, that matters. Um, so if she has time to invest, nobody has an excuse not to. Please join me in welcoming Rebecca Hughes. Thank you. And it is true, I think most of you know, it's important that Allison says they are boys, right? <laughs> um, so I'm here to share with you my story of how I got started investing today. Well, I'm here to share with you the story today. Um, I am the chief marketing officer at The Motley Fool, and I have been interested in marketing almost my whole life, but definitely since college. I got my degree in marketing, I graduated, and then I went on to work for one of the best marketers in the world, National Geographic. Now, my investing path was not nearly as straightforward. I actually um, didn't even own the first, I didn't even buy the first stock I owned, but the first stock I owned was iOmega. And this was back in the late 90s. Um, iOmega at the time was revolutionizing information storage. They were creating zip drives that could contain as much information on a zip drive as about 70 floppy disks. Um, and as I said, I didn't buy the stock. My fiance bought the stock. Uh, he was a computer information technology major, and so he knew everything that was going on with iOmega and why they were going to be such a big story. And at the time, even though we were still in college, we were engaged and our finances were actually pretty heavily intermingled. And so when he said, hey, I want to buy $300 worth of stock, I was surprised and confused and very scared because, good God, what did he know about investing or the stock market or the economy? Um, at the time, we were both business majors and we were taking Econ 101 together. He was taking it for the second time. He got a D. <laughs> we were not qualified to be playing in the stock market. Um, but his dad owned his own company and his dad had been investing for decades. And even though um, he went through a stockbroker, his dad was incredibly active in his relationship with a stockbroker. He was on top of the decisions, he wanted to be involved. And he taught John all of this. And that literally was all John needed to feel completely confident and competent in you know, taking this big, giant leap. Um, but I didn't get it. I mean, investing was incredibly complicated. It's for professionals who have been taught and they've you know, been trained how to do this. Um, but it was also 1997 or thereabout, and um, online discount brokers were all the rage and they were really changing the landscape for the individual investor. And so John didn't need his dad's stock broker and really all he needed was the information, so he thought, I know all about iOmega, I know all about the technology that's about to you know, come onto the scene. He had the money for the initial investment, he could open his own account to trade in, and he had the confidence to go for it. Um, coincidentally, around the same time, The Motley Fool was also eyeing iOmega. Back when Tom and David started The Fool, they had a few foundational principles on which we all still operate today. Number one, anyone can invest in the stock market. Number two, the stock market is the best way to grow your wealth over the long term. And number three, the power of community is the individual investor's secret weapon. You see, um, Tom and David and The Motley Fool created message boards back then, and they connected investors all over the country. And there just so happened to be some investors in Utah, which is where iOmega was located, who were hanging out with the company. They were demoing the products, they were staking out the parking lot, and they were seeing if cars were there all day and all night. They just had this kind of underground information that they were reporting back on the message boards for all of the investors to benefit from. And so Tom and David heard the scuttlebutt on the boards, they researched the company more, and they decided to buy shares in iOmega. And they went on for a 212% return on that when they sold it. So I'm here tonight to show you that anyone at any point in their life can get involved with their finances and really you can build a brighter future for yourself. And just as John proved to me, 
Truly, all it takes is information. Whatever capital you have to invest, we started with $300 and the confidence to go and do it. Today, I stand before you very proud. I make 50% of all the investing decisions in our portfolio as a couple. I select half the stocks we invest our hard-earned money in, and John selects the other half of the stocks. So thanks to The Fool, we have been investing about 12 years, and we are up 50% on our money, which means we have 50% more money to live the lives we want, to fulfill the dreams of our children, 50% more money. And when I reflected on, well, where did I get the confidence to do this? You know, as, as Luann just shared with us, men are overconfident, and women, um, in my case, were very underconfident. But I realized it's so easy, and it's something that I started calling you as a portfolio. And I'll explain in just a minute, but first I have to admit, this is not a new idea. I actually ripped it off from a famous investor named Peter Lynch. For those of you who don't know who Peter Lynch is, he was a um, fund manager and he ran um, Fidelity's Magellan Fund. He, over the years that he ran the fund, he grew it to $14 billion and he had an average return of 29.6%, so pretty impressive. But he, um, he was famous for really a straightforward investing philosophy that he, he put out there all the time, which he called, invest in what you know. He really thought that individual, he really still thinks that individual investors can be successful in the market when you just invest the things that you already know about or that you are an expert in. And so I thought, well, I can do that, right? I sat down on a piece of paper one day and literally I asked myself the following questions. So think about this for yourself as I run through them. What do I spend my money on? Right? What clothes do I buy? What cars have I driven now and in the past? What kind of electronics do I use every day to keep my life in order? Um, what kind of food do I spend my money on? And what services do I use and pay for all the time? Me as a consumer, I'm paying for these things to a company all the time. And as I listed the companies that were answers to my questions, I realized I literally have a stock portfolio sitting in front of me. This is a represent representation of me in a stock portfolio. So my next thought, of course, was, but are these good investments, right? And this is the part that takes a lot of honing and the answer changes over time. Some of the companies that are very relevant in our lives today are great investments for a long time horizon and some are great for when you're older and your strategy changes. Um, so I listed the companies down one side of the paper and across the top I listed five to ten categories that changes from time to time. But um, the categories were things that I could compare each of these companies against. So I started with things that are just my opinion. Why do I buy from these companies? Who are the competitors and what do I think of the competitors? But then quickly I moved to The Motley Fool because I work here and they're awesome for all the rest of the information which is, you know, there's a couple financial metrics that I look at and then there's there's just kind of what's the growth potential, what's the opportunity of these companies. And I read everything that The Motley Fool has to say about them. The analysts and the advisors that are doing all the work for me, I read it. And then I make a decision. I decide if I agree with them. And if they do, I take the plunge. And um, I will warn you, it doesn't always work out. <laughs> Um, of the 45 stocks that my husband and I own today, eight are currently in the red, and that's after a remarkable year in the market. Um, but over the last 12 years that I've been partnering with The Motley Fool in my personal life, as well as my professional life to invest, it works out so many more times than it doesn't. And it's the only way so far I've found that I can grow the money I work every day for by 50%, by just using my brain and a resource that I trust. So if you are thinking about getting started, or even if you've been investing and you're just looking for that next great stock idea, don't overthink it. Look in the mirror, ask yourself, what do you know about? And you just might have a really great stock pick there. And then have the confidence to act on it. Thank you. Thank you.